So in section 6.1, part 1, we discuss how to solve uh, a system of linear case, case equations using the graphing method. And we look to see where the two lines cross. Uh, the problem with the graphing method is what if the two lines cross like with really, really big numbers, like in the hundreds or the thousands? It's very unlikely that you're going to want to graph something that large. Also, what if they cross at very, very small numbers, like very small fractions, like, you know, 1 over 57, some things that are some unusual fractions. You're probably not going to see very small numbers on a graph either. So that's why we need multiple methods. The second method is called the substitution method. What the substitution method is, is that we're going to solve one of the equations for one of the variables, plug that information into the other equation, get our first value of our ordered pair, and then plug that value back into the first equation. So my first system is 5x minus 3y equals 23 and 2x plus y equals 7. So I would suggest trying to solve for the variable that make, is the easiest to solve for. And as I look through these, I think the y is the easiest one to solve for in the second equation because all I got to do is to subtract 2x from both sides and I have solved for it. So that's going to be y equals negative 2x plus 7. Now, I don't have to solve for y. I could choose to solve for x if I want to, but I just don't think that's a good idea because if you tried to solve for the x on this equation, that means you would have to divide by 2, and when you divide everything by 2, you might have to deal with some fractions. And fractions aren't bad, but if you can get around working with fractions, then why not? So we know that y equals negative 2x plus 7. So we're going to take that to the first equation, and we're going to replace the y in that first equation with what we just figured out it equals, negative 2x plus 7. <clears throat> and that will equal the 23. And then we solve for the x. So we'll start out with distributive property. So we'll have negative 3 times negative 2x, so that's 6x. I guess I should bring down the 5x, so that's a positive 6x. So 5x plus positive 6x. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21, equals 23. And then we will add and combine like terms. So we have 5x and 6x, that's 11x minus 21 equals 23. That's positive 23. And then add 21. So 11x equals 44. Divide by 11, and we get our first answer. x is going to be 4. So now that we know x is 4, we're going to go back to the first equation, the red equation, and we are going to replace the x with 4. So we'll have y equals negative 2, replace the x with 4. Let's uh, try to color code that a little better. I need to do a blue. There you go. Plus 7. And what is negative 2 times 4 plus 7? Well, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 7 is negative 1. So y is negative 1, and that is my y value. Write your answer as an ordered pair, because that is the ordered pair that the two graphs, the two lines will intersect at, and we can figure that out without graphing at all. Let's do another one. So looking at the second system, we have x minus 7y equals 11, and 5x plus 4y equals negative 23. So think about which equation would be the easiest to solve for. And I want to show you what happens if you pick a, a variable that is more difficult to solve for. So let's say, for example, you decided to solve for the, five, the x in the second equation. You wanted to solve for that one. So to solve for that, you would have to subtract 4y from both sides. That's it's 4y. And you would have 5x equals negative 4y minus 23, and then divide by 5. So you're going to have to plug this into the other equation. You would have to plug in negative 4 fifths, negative 4 fifths y minus 23 fifths. 
and you probably don't want to do that, so let's not solve for the x. Think about which equation you want to solve for and which variable. So really, the easiest one to solve for would be in the first equation, the x, because we could simply solve for that just by adding 7y. And we've solved for x. It's x is going to equal 7y plus 11. And we have solved for x. So think about what variable you want to solve for and solve for that one. Just don't pick a variable uh, because even though you're not wrong in doing that, you will likely make it more difficult than you really need to. So now we're going to go back to this equation and replace the x in that equation with 7y plus 11. Plus 4y equals negative 23. Distribute, so that is 35y plus 55 plus 4y equals negative 23 equals negative 23 equals there we go combine like terms so 35y and 4y combined to 39y plus 55 equals negative 23 subtract 55 so 39y equals negative 78 divide by 39 and we get y equal to negative 2. So remember that's y so I need to put that in the second number in my ordered pair and then I take that to the first equation the red equation and I have x equals 7 and replace that y with a negative 2 plus 11 and negative 7, or excuse me, 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, plus 11 is negative 3. So x equals negative 3. And there's my answer, negative 3, negative 2. Okay, special case situations, just like we have infinite solutions and no solutions with graphing by, uh, or by solving by graphing, that situation can happen when dealing with solving by substitution. So this is what it's going to look like, the infinite solution and no solutions. So which one of these will be the best to solve for? So think about it. And I would say that the best one to solve for is actually the x in the second equation. Now we are going to have to divide by negative 1 on that, but at least we won't have to deal with a large number of fractions. So I would solve that by subtracting... 6y from both sides. And that would be negative x equals negative 6y minus 9 and divide by negative 1. So x will equal 6y, that's positive 6y plus 9. Go to the first equation, replace the x with what we just found out it equals, 6y plus 9. Minus 12y equals 3. And distribute. So 2 times 6y is 12y plus 18. Minus 12y equals 3. And then combine like terms. Well, notice I have a 12y and a negative 12y, and 12y and negative 12y actually cancel each other out. So that leaves me with just 18 equals 3. Huh. I have no variables left. What should I do? Well, does 18 really equal 3? No, it does not. That is not true. Well, since that is not true, since we don't have any variables left and we get something that's not true, this is the case where there is no solution. No solution. So on the other problem, you do have to pick a variable solve for. Now on this one, yeah, like I said, sometimes there's just no getting around it you're not going to be able to avoid fractions, but try to pick maybe a variable that maybe you only have one fraction to deal with and not necessarily two of them. So think about that. 
And as I'm looking through this, I see that when I look at this 3y, if I solve for that y, I'm going to divide by 3. And if I take 15 divided by 3, that's 5. That's a whole number, so at least I won't have to deal with two fractions in my substitute. I'll just have to do one. So we're going to solve that one for the y. So we do that by subtracting 2x from both sides. If it will let me. There we go. So 3y equals negative 2x plus 15. And now divide by 3. So x is going to equal negative 2 thirds x plus, and 15 divided by 3 is 5. And then we take that to the first equation. So negative 4 x, excuse me, not x, because we're substituting, right? So let's try that again. So it'll be negative 4. So on the last example, what we have there is two equations, and I don't see a variable that's just an x or just a y. So that means that we may have to deal with some fractions on this one. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Now, you can help yourself out by trying to find maybe a variable that when you divide by, you'll only get one fraction to deal with. So uh, look through the negative 4x minus 6y equals negative 30 and the 2x plus 3y equals 15, and think about which variable would I, could I divide by and only have to deal with one fraction? And there's actually a couple of possibilities, but I really like the 3y and solving for the 3y. And the reason for that is that when we solve by 3y, it's that 3y right there, and when we solve for three, the y, we're going to have to take 15 divided by 3, and that's a whole number 5. So we won't have to deal with two fractions, we'll just deal with one. So let's go ahead and solve for that one. So subtract 2x from both sides. That gives me 3y equals negative 2x plus 15. So that's supposed to be plus 15. I got an extra streak in there. Let's get rid of that. There we go. And then we will divide by the 3. So I get y equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 5. So we do have negative 2 thirds x. We got one fraction, but not 2. Now take it to the first equation. So that's going to be negative 4x minus 6. And substitute for y, negative 2 thirds x plus 5 equals negative 30. Distribute. So negative 4x. Negative 6 times negative 2 thirds x, that is positive 4x. And negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Equals negative 30 on the other side of the equal sign. And just like the first uh, special case situation we had, we have the x's cancel each other out. Negative 4x and 4x cancel each other out. So I'm left with just negative 30 equals negative 30. Well, what do we know about a number equaling itself? Well, from geometry, we remember the reflexive property that a number always equals itself. So this is a true statement. This is true. And so since all the variables canceled out and we wind up with a true statement, this is the case where we have the infinite solutions. So notice the difference between the two. Different numbers no solution. Same numbers, infinite solutions.